us and give you praise. Amen. 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 You can be seated. We've, uh, I guess Jessica has a special for us this morning. It's so good to have Jessica and, and Eva and Eva as part of our church. Yeah, no, I was just talking about you, not to you. Relax. Take a chiller, kiddo. It's fine. Yeah, today. Not today, but it's coming. <laughs> In the presence of Jehovah, God.
that was loud. Whenever you do that, every sound guy in the world goes, please stop now. So there you go. Um, we're giving him a hard time. Michael's going to preach this morning. We've been working on this. We, we kind of fleshed it out together. Uh, I do enjoy hearing him preach. Uh, and I think he has passion and a love for the word. And so don't make me talk while you come up here. There you go. I don't know if that's a compliment or if it's an insult. <laughs> that was at the American Legion Hall. Uh, I, I ain't that little now. Uh there's a great presence here. I've been feeling it the past few weeks. There's just a great presence here. And this, uh, this popped in my head a few weeks ago. And I haven't, like I told you guys last week, I haven't been able to get it out of my mind. I may get a little bit emotional this Sunday, but I, I believe I got a word for y'all. We're going to Mark 4.8 today. And there's no one in the media booth. But other seeds fell on good ground and yielded a crop that sprang increase and produced some 30-fold, some 60, and some 100. I want to speak on you this subject today. The seed has been planted. Do you believe that we have been playing on good ground here in Johnstown? It's been going through my mind as, you know, I drive through here every morning now on my way to work. And I'm just seeing everything that's going on. I drive through where Intel's going to be built. I go through where Amazon, Facebook, all that's being built. I'm just like, there's such a time right now that I'm so happy that we have a church here that is just preaching the gospel. And so I, I want to go to our verse that we, we've been preaching on here in the past couple first Wednesdays. And, uh, and I mean, this is, this is the cornerstone of what we believe. Amen? It says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. That is the cornerstone. There is no wiggle room on what we believe there. That's why it's above the baptistry. That's why it's mentioned so many times when we're speaking. But I think the next verse doesn't get enough recognition for what, with this, what comes from that? In Acts 2.39, it says, For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to as many as are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Now, as I'm getting older, and I'm not, I'm not, but, uh, as I'm getting older, I'm starting to hear more about my grandmother. I didn't get to know her. <laughs> but I know she had a spirit in this house. I know she planted a seed in my family. <laughs> I still have my grandfather, but I don't have my grandmother anymore. But I hear stories of how she prayed over me as a child. <laughs> And how passionate she was over this. <sighs> how passionate she was over the word. I start to hear more about how passionate she was. And she had three kids. My dad, my aunt, and my uncle. Two of those produced churches. My aunt Julie pastors in Seminole like we heard earlier. 
and we have a church here in Johnstown. But that was all a product of the promise that God laid on that laid on my dad's life, that he laid on my aunt's life. That's a promise from God. And I'm just reading that, and the promise continues. With my aunt has her son, Micaiah, and with Gary, with me, with Becky. The promise doesn't stop. There's salvation in that promise. It doesn't matter who you are, what you've done. That word is everything. And because of that word, there is eternal life. In that verse, Peter's just reiterating what Jesus told him 10 days earlier. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you bec shall become witnesses to me in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. Jesus is saying, just like Peter says, he says it's not going to end just with this generation. There's so much more. There's an entire world that you haven't even seen that I'm going to spread my word. I'm going to, I'm going to go minister to. But you haven't even seen it yet. We're, we're promised to receive the Spirit, but we're also supposed to be witnesses to the Word. And you may say, well, there's people not here right now. There's people that, that have, have came, like Rocky was talking, people have came and then they've walked away. Oh, but we've planted a seed in them. The prophet Jeremiah says, then he said, to what shall... Oh, no, that's Mark. <laughs> For when I spoke, I cried out, I shouted, violence and plunder, because the word of the Lord was made to me a reproach and a der der derision daily. Then I said that I will not mention of him. This is verse 9. Then I said I will not mention of him, nor speak any more in his name. This is this. At the beginning, he says, I'm not, it's one verse. He says, I'm not going to mention his name anymore. I'm going to turn away from everything. The next part, he redacts everything that he just said. He said, it was like a fire shut up in my bones. It doesn't matter if they walk away or not. You start a seed inside their lives. This is what we believe. This is our faith. It doesn't matter because once they get back into the scriptures and once they start hearing the word again, it's like a fire. It just starts eating at them. It just starts, it makes them want to come closer. Once, once you have given God a place to rest, he doesn't, he, he doesn't leave it. It may seem sometimes it, it's just out of reach that they're no longer able to come. But God is a forgiving God. Seven times, 70 times, he's going to read. And that's every day. Every day. In Mark 4, 30 through 32, he's, he talks about the parable of the mustard seed. He said, then he said, to what shall we call the kingdom of God? Or what parable shall we picture? It's like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground, it's small. It's smaller than all the other seeds on the earth. But when it's sown, it grows and becomes greater than all the herbs, shoots out branches so that the birds may, of the air may nest under its shade. Because that seed was planted, it may just be the tiniest bit of faith. We've been talking about that for the harvest and preparing for the harvest. But it just starts with a grain of a mustard seed so small so minuscule what could that mean but it grows into a bigger tree grows into a bigger ministry grows into something we can't even imagine god's talking about the mustard seed and it's just like it provides shade for people people may come in and they're hurt they're wounded but 
we're like, don't worry. We become a shade as the church. We become a shade to those people. We'll pray for you. We'll minister to you. Whatever you need, we have your back. Just like our faith at mustard seed, we, we may start out just very small and then we'll go to a sapling. But eventually, we're going to get bigger and bigger. And there's no denying what God does for you. People are going to look at you and be, like Rocky was saying this, people are going to look at you and say, there's something different about you. And it may scare them at first, but the, eventually they're going to come closer and closer. And they're going to be like, what makes you so different? Why... Like Debbie's talked about, she, she's going through the roughest patch of her life, but she looks like she has joy. And that's the joy of God. This world is failing. But there's a light. There's a light, and people are starting to see it. In Matthew chapter 21, the before the scripture, Jesus has just got done at the temple. And, well, whenever Jesus went to the temple, it was never a good thing in the later scriptures. Um, so, but, so he just left the temple. And he says, now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. And seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And he said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately, the fig tree withered. Now, we may look at that, and it may seem harsh that Jesus didn't even, he could have said, provide fruit for me. He could have said anything, but he's like, no, die. <laughs> I'm just going to let that sink in for a minute. He just is like, die. But he also has another, uh, he has a parable about a fig tree. And he says, he also spoke in this parable, this is in Luke 13. He also spoke this parable, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. And he came seeking fruit on it and found none. Then he said to the keeper of his vineyard, Look, for three years I have come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why does it use up the ground? But he answered and said to him, Sir, let it alone this year also. And I dig around it and fertilize it. And if it bears fruit, well, but if not, after that you can come cut it down. In this parable, the groundskeeper wants the owner of the land to take pity on the fig tree. He said, give me one more year. Give me one more year to just allow the nutrition of the fertilizer get into it. It, it takes a li Sometimes it takes a little bit more time. Sometimes it takes a little bit more deeper dive into the Word of God for that seed to grow, for us to dig deeper and to find what we're looking for. The answer is not always yes, but sometimes it's no. God is always answering our prayers, whether it seems like it or not. Sometimes the answer is just no. But he's, the groundskeeper's showing grace to this tree. The tree's three years old, hasn't produced any fruit for me, cut it down. Give me one more year. And God sometimes is just like, just wait another year. What's going to happen in another year? What's going to happen next year? What's going to happen the year after that? We're talking about walls falling down this year. We're talking about great harvest. What's going to happen another year? Dad was reading a book. It's called One More Year. And he read it at the beginning of planting this church. Because if you remember, Kathy, it was us and no one else and the man's. It was just the man's and the Ryan's. That was, that was all. And all. And Dad was reading this book, and all the, it's from another church planner, he's like, just give me one more year. God, I'm, I'm giving you one more year, one year at a time. Give me one more year. 
And what are we seeing? We're seeing the ball start to roll. We get more people. We're getting more people through the baptistry. We're getting more people the Holy Ghost. That's all God. That's not us. That's God. That's because God put us in the field that we're in. But in chapter 21, he says, And when the disciples saw it, they marveled. How did the fig tree weather away so soon? I'm just going to throw it out there, disciples. Um, that's the Son of God. That's, that's, the, that's the first point I'm going to make. But again, the disciples weren't the brightest tools in the tool shed. Um, Jesus answers to them, Surely I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be moved and cast into the sea, it will be done. And whatever things you ask in prayer, believing, you will receive. I believe there's a great harvest here in Johnstown, and I believe that we're going to need a bigger building than we can ever imagine. Whatever, whatever we believe that God can do, the unthinkable, not what we think we can do, but what He can do, it's just, we're that close, that close. So now we're getting to where we started. And this is Dad's favorite parable. We, we've heard it before. It's his favorite parable. It's the parable of the sower. He has a picture in his office if you want to go see it. But he said, listen, behold, a sower went out to sow. It didn't say the ground was already, already had plants in it. It didn't, have, it didn't say a field was grown up and it was ready to walk into he said, behold, a sower went to sow. Behold, a sower went and he started planting seeds. And it goes, he laid some by the rocky ground and laid some in the good ground. But he's like, even if they don't receive it, it's a start. It's just a start. All you need is that little seed. Some seeds can grow in that rocky ground. Some seeds can grow in that ground that hasn't been touched yet. But he, the important part is he starts sowing to it. He didn't, he didn't stop at just a, little, just a little patch of ground. He just started anywhere and everywhere. This is where I'm going. And then you get to the end of the parable in, chap, in verse 8. But other seeds fell on good ground and yielded crops that sprang up, increased and produced, some 30-fold, some 60, some 100. Not every church is going to be a mega church. Not every church is going to grow up and just have 300 people in a balcony section and a lower section. That's not, that's not going to happen. But the important part is if you look on that back wall, what have we done? We started sowing into fields. What are we up to? 26 missionaries? 26. We may not be a mega church, but we started planting in other fields. And what are those other fields doing? Those are a part of us. Whether, whether we know it or not, those are a part of our field. What happens there? we rejoice for as they rejoice for us what happens here. And in Zechariah, he talks, he says, who has despised the day of small things? The, the Bible says despise small things. Our goal is not to be a tiny church. I love our tiny church, but our job is not to be a tiny church. Our job is to go out into the world and get as many people saved as possible. Whether that be in this building or we have to build a new building, that whatever God's will is, I'm ready for it. Because it's our job to plant seeds in everybody here, in Johnstown, in Appleton, 
Utica, wherever it may be, we're going to have a field and it's going to be a harvest. I was talking about my grandma. She prayed prayers over me. She prayed prayers over my, my dad and his siblings. She prayed over Becky. But there was someone else who picked up the mantle when she's, when she's gone. And it's Sister Monk. And Sister Monk has picked up that mantle. Don't be afraid to pick up the mantle for someone in your family, for your friends, for wherever you're going. Because with that, you start ingraining a little seed inside their lives, and it's going to grow. And when they get into a building where, it, where you've been praying, where you've been seeking God, it's just going to, it's going to burn inside them. Oh, there's something here greater than I can ever imagine. I'm ready for what's going to happen here. The Spirit's been great here. Amen? Pastor? This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You can claim him too, Kathy, just, just not on your taxes. Um, here, was, here was my favorite part of that sermon. I drive through every day through Johnstown, and I think about there's a need for a church here. Boy, where have you heard that before? For 10 years, I drove through this was a village then. Jack, we were a village, right? Now we're a city. 10 years. Boy, we need a church. And when I was ready to quit, Don Mann came to me and goes, would you teach a Bible study to my brother and sister-in-law? I didn't know how crazy they were then. Boy, I do now. That's all right. You've, you've worked off your debt. <laughs> When I was, because in God's time, in God's time, fine, let's go teach a Bible study. In July of 2014, almost 10 years ago, three weeks and this church will turn nine. First Sunday in April. And, and here's the great thing, that Sunday, John Anderson is preaching because God has put tools in this church, people, right? I love, so I'm not going to re-preach his sermon because he actually did a pretty good job today. So, right? Every time you talk about those prayers, those prayers, those prayers, there's Ted Mann sitting there with his mom and dad. Prayers and prayers and prayers and prayers and prayers. Why? Because in the fullness of, and we don't understand God's time. <laughs> when I play in this church, I said, I'm giving it five years and that's it. Do you know the number of times I've rolled that over and said, okay, one more year. Fine, one more year. Fine, one more year. I'm on my fourth. Fine, one more year. And in three weeks, I'm going to look at God and go, fine, one more year. Why? Because things are finally happening. Not in my time, <laughs> but in God's time. There you go. Stand this morning. Amen. The seed has indeed been planted. Some fell and the birds ate it. Some fell on the stony ground. Some fell among the thorns. But some fell on good ground. And it produced 30 and 60 and 100 fold. 
you don't worry about the harvest. That's God's problem. You just keep right on sowing. You keep right on sowing. And God will give the increase. Amen? You believe that? I believe that. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Jesus, we love you this morning. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the promise of a harvest. God, you've been so good to us. Lord, I pray that you'd be with each of us. Help us to uh, do your will this week, Lord, and bring us into this house next week. In the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. Amen. I love every one of you. And there's nothing you can do about it. I will see you next week. God bless you.